Today we're gonna to go over that trap switch that I had to deal with yesterday on the Pioneer Plasma and what its function is, why it's there, why did Pioneer do such a thing? And a warning for people that might want to dig into one of these units as to how to not fall into the situation that I fell into because I was unaware that it was there initially. I wasn't really looking for it. I was looking for a power supply problem and well, I got trapped. So what exactly is the trap switch? Well, the trap switch is a type of an interlock, but unlike a conventional interlock that shuts a TV or shuts the product down when the back is removed, on a conventional interlock, once you put the back on or you deactivate the switch, it returns to normal. But the trap switch, well, that's a little more permanent. It sets a code in the EEPROM to prevent the unit from operating again until it is reset. Now, the idea behind a switch like this when it's used as an interlock is to prevent dangerous voltages be from being switched on when the back is off. Old televisions from back in the 60s and 70s, for example, had an interlock on the back. When you removed the back, the television would not power up. And to power it up, you needed to use a cheater cord. This is the same idea. However, Pioneer takes us one step further. Pioneer used this to lock the set out. By lock the set out, I mean to permanently shut it down. The way they implemented this is really kind of sneaky. It was designed to punish anybody who was not an authorized servicer. So say you took your television into the local TV repair shop. The tech opens the backup, goes to plug in the power to try to do some troubleshooting, and the set is completely disabled. Now, it can be reset, but not on all sets. Some sets you can do with the factory remote. Others required a special programming remote. Now, I was lucky I had the original remote and this one was able to be reset using the remote. First things first, I would suggest if you have one of these Pioneer Plasmas and you want to work on it, eliminate the switch before you attempt to power it up. And that's just done by cutting the plug off and sticking the wires together. That way you don't have to worry. Like if you, if you tape the switch shut or whatever, it could always pop open. Eliminate the switch. It's useless. It's not needed. It was a feature, not a feature, it was a trap that was put on by Pioneer to stop the competition from working on things and to stop hobbyists from working on it. The company's gone. Information on this is quite sparse. I'm going to tell you how to do these ones that do not require the programming remote. It's, it's quite easy. You use, but you do need the original factory remote to do it. So this is kind of a little pointer to stop you from falling into the trap that I fell into. And I fell into it only because I hadn't worked on one of these before. I plugged it in with the back off. And then when I got the set locked out, then I realized that, wait a minute, what's this stupid switch do? To attempt reset, turn the master power switch on, then press the display key, wait five to seven seconds, left arrow, up arrow, left arrow, right arrow, and power. If it works, the set will turn on. If not, you may have to do it more than once, or you may need the special programming remote, depending on the model. If it works, you're going to get this message starting up. Please wait. So you got to wait, and the screen will go into a diagnostic mode. Once you get to the screen, we're going to use the mute button and keep depressing mute until we get to the initialize screen. Now we're going to press and hold the display key. Now this step is important is this is what actually erases the lock code and resets it. If you don't do that, it will still be in lock mode if you turn it off. So once you receive this screen again after pressing and holding the display key, you can turn the power off and the set will then return to normal. And you've now cleared the trap code. Hope this helps some people. Now again, your results may vary or they say your mileage may vary. This only applies to the models that can be reset with the factory remote. If you don't have the factory remote, it's not gonna help you. You're not gonna be able to do this from a universal remote. You need the factory remote. And not every model, because you see, Pioneer got smart when information started circulating about how to do this. They just updated the code and required that you had to have the serviceman's remote, which was not generally available to the public. They locked it down again. Sneaky bastards. That's all I have to say. 
Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.